Okay, let's do our first example of gates and pressures. Um, and here we actually have a tank. We have a tank here, and it's holding some unknown liquid with a specific gravity of 0 0.8. And the second liquid is water, and the water goes down here to this uh, manometer tube. And saying the liquid inside this manometer manometer is uh, mercury and it's rising one foot above where the water here ends okay and the gate here is actually hinged at A and there's a little stopper here at B pushing towards the gate keeping it from opening and of course the unknown liquid is um, four feet and the water is three feet and the water inside the a manometer is three feet and the problem gives us that the weight of this gate is four tons so four thousand pounds and the cross-section or not the cross-sectional area but the front facing so I'm gonna draw this little eyeball and this eyeball is looking straight at the gate and this is what the eyeball uh, sees it sees a six foot by five foot gate and the centroid is obviously there and the problem also gives us as a specific gravity of mercury is 13.6 right so the very first thing you want to do in these problems um, here the very first step one is draw a free body diagram of the gate so let's do that let's draw the gate okay and the centroid is right here and remember we can replace um, the pressure distribution acting on this gate by a force and a couple now the pressure distribution acting on this gate looks something like let's see if I can draw this right is is looking something like that so obviously the the, the farther you go down the pressure increases and we don't really know what the pressure is at A because the liquid actually goes all the way to the top of the gate and we don't it's not open to the free surface so we don't know what the pressure dish or the pressure is at the very top of the gate but anyway we can say okay well this pressure distribution can be um, written as a force that results from the pressure at the centroid of the gate and in this case the couple is acting um, this way the couple resulting from the pressure distribution right because the couple always goes from the smaller end to the bigger end of the pressure distribution around the centroid and the reactions at A it's a pin it's a hinge so it has a if you remember from statics it has a AY and an AX and down here at B well the B there's a force at B going horizontal keeping the gate from going up so down at B we just have one um, force and they're saying well what is B what's that force needed to keep this gate closed under this um, liquid scenario and remember our two equations we can use to find the couple and the force is that FP or the force acting at the centroid of the object resulting from the pressure distribution is the pressure at the centroid of that gate uh, times the area of that gate and the couple same thing it's the specific weight of the liquid that's touching the gate times IX or the second um, area moment inertia times cosine beta and now that we have the free body diagram set up we can actually go to step two and step two I'll put up here step two is to find the pressure at the centroid of this gate and um, we need that we need that to find the force right the pressure the force so I'll say that the centroid is right about there and 
it's going to be, if this is 4 feet, if the, if the distance from A to the water is 4 feet, that means the centroid of this gate is um, 2 feet, right? Halfway, 4. Um, and it looks like this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? 5. And we can use manometry to find the pressure at C. So let's do that. Let's use manometry to use this manometer to find the pressure at C. So I'll label this point 0.1. I'll label this point 0.2. Uh, maybe we can go up here, label this point 0.3, and, and C we'll call point 0.4, right? So the change in pressure, or the pressure at 4 minus the pressure at 1 is going to be equal to, um, we'll say, the 1 foot, the 1 foot, times 13.6, uh, right, the specific gravity of mercury, and in order to change that to gamma of the liquid here, we multiply it by uh, the specific weight of water, which is 62.4, um, and then from 2 to 3, we go up 3, or we go up 6 feet, and if we go up, that means the pressure is negative, or it's, it's decreasing in pressure, so it's 6 feet. And then the specific weight of water is 62.4. And then, again, from 3 to 4, we're going up 2, because that's where the center is, is located. Um, so, minus 2 feet times, the unknown liquid is 0.8, so remember, a specific gravity times the specific weight of water gives us the specific weight of the liquid. So, it's going to be 0 0.8 times 62.4, and if we solve this out, the pressure at 1 is open to a free surface, so we know that is 0. So the pressure at 4, or the pressure at the centroid, is going to be equal to 374.4 pound per foot squared, okay? So that's the pressure at C. So now we have the pressure at C. And the rest um, I'll do in the next video.